Hi, everyone. I'm Jack Cush with Room Now, and I'm here with good friend and past ACR president and rheumatologist par excellence, Dr. Stanley Cohen. How are you, Stan? Great, Jack. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I wanted to bring Stan on because he had a really great presentation um, this week at ACR where he was talking about comorbidities. And Stan, you were asked to talk about liver disease and RA. Now, I, no one really thinks of liver disease and RA, but it happens all the time. What was your take as you set out to talk about this? Well, this was a, a session on difficult RA cases. And, uh, you know, they, my task was looking at the RA and, uh, and the liver diseases. And as you know, in clinic, both of us deal a lot with the folks who have metabolic syndrome, obese, with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. is probably one of the most common dilemmas we have about which therapies to choose. And or later this morning, we're going to hear about the new ACR recommendations for pharmacologic treatment. And this will be addressed there again. Uh, we frequently deal with issues of transaminitis related to our therapies, whether it be ANSEDs or whether it be methotrexate, lupinamide, or, uh, or even our biologics or targeted synthetic DMARDs. Uh, we rarely see uh, infectious uh, diseases such as CMV, which can affect the liver. Uh, I've had a few couple cases of amoebic abscesses and so forth. Um, and then we have the autoimmune syndromes, which rarely occur in RA, like primary sclerosis and cholangitis, primary biliary cholangitis that can be seen. Uh, in North America, we are infrequently uh, have to deal with patients who have been exposed in the past to hepatitis B. It's a real big problem worldwide, and there's a big problem with reactivation of hepatitis B in patients who receive immunomodulators. So I presented a case of actually one of my associates, uh, who was a lady who came with active rheumatoid arthritis and was found to be hepatitis B uh, surface antigen uh, positive and hepatitis core antibody positive without hepatitis B surface antibody. Uh, she had very low levels of hepatitis B viral DNA. And as per recommendation from the ACR recommendation 2015, we patient was appropriately sent to a hepatologist who evaluated her with other serology, such as hepatitis B E antigen, which was negative, the E antibody was positive. And so this is a chronic hepatitis B carrier. And if this patient is going to receive uh, immunomodulatory therapy, uh, they may need to be on antiviral therapy. Right. So uh, the patient was reluctant. She refused and was stayed on sulfasalazine and hydroxychloroquine and did not have a, did not have a good result uh, as far as managing the RA. So uh, the guidelines have been pretty well established uh, by the American Association of Society of Liver Diseases. Every several years, they update their recommendations. And, you know, clearly for someone with uh, hepatitis B surface antigen positive and core antibody, if they're going to go on targeted synthetic DMARDs or biologics, they need to be on antiviral therapy. If they're core antibody positive with those types of therapies, you can generally monitor the patient, check their hepatitis B viral DNA, check their LFTs frequently every three to six months. Uh, but if rituxan is being used, which is one of the drugs that we use frequently these days for vasculitis as well as RA, uh, even if they're just core antibody positive, then they should be on antiviral therapy. And then they need to be on antiviral therapy for a year after you discontinue the rituxan uh, as well. So, again, uh, the uh, ACR pharmacologic recommendations to be presented later today, uh, this will also be addressed again. So the rituxan is an issue, interesting issue. Uh, there Certainly the, the history of rituxan, you did all the clinical trials developing rituxan, is that viral reactivation is a real possibility with that drug. Um, but... When I looked at this last, um, patients who are core antibody, first off, hep B surface antigen positive, they don't go on any of our drugs unless they're on antiviral, too high a risk of reactivation, which is what, you know, the guidelines that you pointed out said. But core antibody positivity, meaning they have a resolved infection, um, but they're B surface antigen negative. There's a lot of leniency there, but you're saying with rituxan, no. Are there actually case reports of reactivation in those people when rituxan is used? Yes, and I think it's really more in the hematological literature. So, it, it, you know, and there are multiple therapies. So it is, it's, it's unlikely. And the other thing we commonly face in clinic, Jack, is we'll have these false positive hepatitis B core antibodies. People have never had any history of having hepatitis B. Right. And that occurs. It's less likely than it was in the past. But so I think you just have to be diligent. At, you know, with a lot of the, the information we use in rheumatology was taken from uh, oncology, hematology. So you just want to be uh, careful in those people. And the, 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 big, the biggest uh, surprise was this uh, uh, paper that, uh, from the RISE registry, which showed how little screening was done. And I was shocked in some of the questions we got in the polling is, do I need to screen for hepatitis B before I go on biologic therapy? And I was like, right. what, what do you mean? That's what we do in every patient before we do methotrexate. Uh, we check hepatitis B serologies. 
Yeah. So again, the, and you're right. There, there are a lot of studies that have shown that before too, that we're not as good as we should be at that. And so everyone check your hep B, hep C before you start any of these drugs. Um, but again, the battleground, the one that I think needs more clarification is uh, either uh, where there's drug specific risk. Most of our drugs, not so much of a risk um, when you're B surface antigen negative, core antibody positive, but Correct. but the literature does show a two percent chance of of reactivation of those people. So you got to watch them, right? You got to watch them, and also the other problem is, you know, with the, if you go off the therapies, you could have this immune reconstitution syndrome, where you're no longer suppressing the immune system, and then there's a viral DNA around, and you get uh, a fulminant hepatitis, and that's uh, and I've had one case of that in my 42 years of doing this. So what are your, there, there are I think two issues I want to end with. One is what are your guidelines for referral to the hepatologist for further evaluation and management? Well, it depends on how conservative you are. I mean, you know, certainly we have recommendations for us, but I, I, I'm very liberal in my, my referrals. I, I feel comfortable having someone looking over my shoulder who's a hepatologist who spends a lot of time doing this. And, and sometimes they'll be your real partner and they'll assist you and they'll have the patient come back and they'll do the monitoring for you. Sometimes they won't. So, you know, again, uh, I think that uh, bringing another set of eyes to take a look at the situation is always helpful. If someone's core antibody positive, uh, and I'd like them to really drill down and uh, do uh, other serologies, which I normally don't do, like hepatitis B, E, antigen, antibody, things of that nature, to help better define uh, what's going on. So there are two new classes. Uh, obviously, all our drugs can cause liver enzymes and whatnot. Two newer classes in the last uh, newer <laughs> last 20 years. The, the IL-6 inhibitors and the JAK inhibitors where uh, liver enzymes are sometimes an issue. Um, what's your take on that, especially, you know, the JAKs now? Uh, is that much of a, of a concern? Well, first of all, as far as the issue with JAKs, all those patients were excluded from clinical trials, so we don't really have any data. But uh, as far as the liver itself, I, I, I don't think the JAKs are a major issue, certainly in monotherapy. Most of the LFT elevation with the JAK inhibitors is in combination with methotrexate. So now, having said that, if I had someone who has um, chronic liver disease, um, drugs that inhibit IL-6 may not be my first choice, since IL-6 is somewhat homeostatic for liver cell integrity. Um, so if I had alternatives, I would go to alternative therapies. Excellent. All right, so end with what are you looking forward to seeing on the last day here at ACR? Well, uh, I'm part of the pharmacologic recommendations that update. I uh, did a little, uh, you know, five minute to how you would use these in the clinic. So I'm looking forward to see uh, the presentation and how they're going to be received. Thanks. Uh, warmly, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Stan, thank you for your time. As always, you're very helpful. Thank you, Jack.